So Father Sosa, welcome you to the floor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I will try to speak in English. If you don't understand, it's because my English. <laughs> I would like to thank Voices of Faith and the Jesuit Refugee Service for inviting me to celebrate International Women's Day with you and all of those gathered here today. I take this opportunity to show my gratitude to the women who will be speaking today, women who are making a difference in their families and communities, especially in the most remote corners of the world. These are difficult times in our world, and we need to stand and work together as women and men of faith. As you know, the global theme for this year's celebration of International Women's Day is Be Bold for Change. Here in Vatican City, physically at the center of the church, Voices of Faith and GRS seeks to be making the impossible possible, especially here in Rome, that is a bold change. I would like to reflect on what making the impossible possible means to me as the leader of the Society of Jesus, as a citizen of the world, and as a member of the Catholic Church. We need to have the faith that gives the audacity to seek the impossible, as nothing is possible for God. The faith of Mary that opened her heart as a woman to the possibility of something new, to become the mother of God's son. As you may be aware, I come from Latin America, a continent with millions of displaced people, with almost seven millions Colombia has the largest number of internally displaced people in the world, and the disproportionate number of them are women and children. I serve at the border between Colombia and my native Venezuela for 10 years. I have seen firsthand the suffering of those forced to abandon everything to save their life. In Colombia, for example, Women and girls are among the most vulnerable due to widespread violence caused by decades of conflict. They are exposed to armed recruitment and are likely to fall victim to one form of exploitation or another, ranging from modern day slavery to survival, sex, and human trafficking. Many of them flee to the neighboring countries in search of safety and often find themselves on their own in a force to sustain their families. I have also witnessed women's resilience. Despite this traumatic reality, women often find their way to not just surviving, but also overcoming all the difficulties of exile and forced migration. Resilience is what enables us to move forward and think of the future. Resilience is essential for making the impossible possible. Let me offer an example. At the Venezuelan-Colombian border, the Jesuit Refugee Service has been present for more than 10 years. During this time, GRS has brought refugee women from Colombia together by using their artistic expression as a starting point for rediscovering resilience. 
while expressing themselves creatively through art, women also share their experiences and create a network of support to improve their psychosocial, psychosocial well-being. This healing environment is a place for listening and coming together. In other words, resilience. Resilience empowers women and ultimately results in hope and the possibility of reconciliation with the past, with those who have harmed them and with those there they now live. Reconciliation requires courage and too often even 2017, women's courage, women's resilience is unrecognized and undervaluated. By building human connections, resilience, Greg needs the communal fabric. Some may say such resilience is impossible to discover. Years and voices of faith say otherwise. As a member of a human community, each of us is likely appalled at the situation of our world. Human displacement has hit an all-time high, representing incredible human suffering around the world. Ongoing conflicts are at the root of most of this for exile. There are more than 65 million fossilized displaced among us, one in every 113 people globally. Is now in a is an asylum seeker, and internally displays a person or a refugee. We have to think about the ways that we, as the human community, can respond. I cannot put enough emphasis on this need for collaboration between women and men. I believe that only together we can achieve what today seems impossible. A humanity reconciles, reconciled in justice, living in peace, in a common house well kept. We recognize that we are sisters and brothers, sons and daughters of the same God, who is mother and father. support and learn from one another. It already seems impossible to imagine peace in places like Central African Republic or South Sudan or Colombia. Can we have the audacity to dream that women and men working together will bring peace to these countries? I think these impossibilities can come closer to reality if women play a greater role in the conversation. I am not surprised that Angela Merkel has been the most courageous and visionary leader in Europe during this time of phenomenal forced migration. She had the compassion to look at those who were in need and the vision to see that they will make a contribution to Germany and Europe. Another extraordinary leader is Ellen Johnston Sirleaf, the president of Liberia. Through her single-minded dedication and vision, she has brought peace and reconciliation to her war-torn country in a way that most men would be impossible. At the same time, the widespread reality is that women are not paid for, their work, for the work they do or are paid less than men for the same work. In the West, women earn, on average, 70 cents for each dollar or euro a man earns. The gap grows larger in developing areas of the world. Many of us are looking at the world through the prince of xenophobia and narrow-mindedness, 
these days a prince which seems to feed on discord and marginalization. In the Jesuit magazine America, political commentator Koki Roberts, the daughter of two former members of the US, US Congress, puts the reality succinctly in this way. Congress needs more women. They may be, just maybe, Washington will work again. <laughs> this applause is to Cookie Go Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> we can listen carefully to the experience of women in the public sphere. Here now they work together and be inspired for their courage. These are stories of doing the impossible. The role of women in the church can be and has been described in many ways. Keepers of the faith, the backbone of the church, the image of Mary alive among us. We Jesuits are deeply aware of the roles that women play in our ministries. Lay and religious women serve as presidents and heads mistresses, retreat centers directors, teachers, and every possible role one can think of. As you probably know, the spiritual exercises, the foundation of Jesuit spirituality, were first developed by St. Ignatius of Loyola before the Jesuits were founded. Our spirituality is open to all, women and men, that want to become women and men with others and for others. In the Brother Church, there are contrary currents about the role of the women at this time. As stated by the Pope Francis, women play a fundamental role in passing on the face and are a daily source of strength in a society that carries this face forward and renews it. Church teaching certainly promotes the role of women within the family, but it also stresses the need for their contribution in the church and in public life. It draws upon the text of Genesis, which speaks of men and women created in the image of God and the prophetic praxis of Jesus in his relationship with women. Pope Francis has been quite outspoken about women in making decisions and holding responsibility in the church. He has also created a study commission on the women's diaconate to explore the history and role of women in this church structure. But if we are honest, we acknowledge that the fullness of women's participation in the church has not yet arrived. <laughs> that inclusion, which will bring the gift of resiliency and collaboration even more deeply into the church, remains a stymied on many fronts. One aspect has been mentioned by the Pope. We have to work harder to develop a profound theology of women. I will add that an ecclesiology, that is the study of the church, that includes women inequally needed if women's role are to be included as they should. Indeed, the inclusion of women in the church is a creative way to promote the necessary changes in it. A theology and an ecclesiology of women should change the image, the concept, and the structures of the church. Should push the church to become the people of God, as we proclaim by the Second Vatican Council. Women's creativity can open 
new ways of being a Christian community of disciples, men and women together, witnesses and preachers of the good news. But perhaps more importantly, the inclusion of women will be also be an outcome of, a, of the key concerns of the Pope. By bringing Vatican II to life and incorporating the poor into our church, Francis is giving women's voices more opportunity to speak and be counted. No one is more resilient than women building and supporting the church in the poorest part of our world. In these efforts against clericalism and the elitism and sexism that come with it, the Pope seeks to open our future to voices outside of the Vatican to bring the experience of the world into forming that future. The opposite of clericalism is collaboration, working together a bastide daughters and son of God. These efforts have begun the process of deeper inclusion of women into the core of the church. As challenging as the refugee crisis or other world issues are to some of us, this might be truly the impossible. Saint Francis of Assisi himself said, start by doing what is necessary then what is possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. In that spirit, we are here today to listen to voices of faith, to hear uh, stories of resilience, collaboration, and inclusion. We have more than started. We will not stop. Thank you very much. <laughs>